are we ready to go? Do 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 do. All ready for this? Do 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 do. Yeah. Cool. Let's go. Hi guys and welcome back to Almost a Cinephile. My name is Becca. If you are new here, we talk about all things physical media and movies. If that sounds like your jam, then please, uh, you can subscribe below uh, and give this video a like and also leave a comment in the below as well. That'd be lovely. Uh, today is my October physical media haul and she's big. She, she's gonna hurt me now. She is really, really big so first things first i'm gonna start with a few christmasy films and the children's films if that's not your vibe please skip to the next section um i know some people are interested in that kind of thing and some people not so much i have children we collect films for them as well as myself so i will always be sharing those on the channel if anybody is interested um i will give a kind of brief description of each film some i've seen some i have not some i've only watched half which if you know me that seems to be a running theme so sit down make yourself a nice hot drink get a snack and uh, let's begin so first things first is the christmas films and we have got Arthur Christmas, kind of like this one. It's a really interesting take on the traditional Santa story. Uh, it's about like a generational Santa thing. So there's like a family of um, Santas and basically uh, each Santa retires and then it gets inherited by the next person in the line. Um, and basically they think it's going to be the brother that's more kind of military-esque um and is kind of bringing in very new ideas new gadgets new technologies um but if you haven't seen it spoiler alert um it actually ends up being the character arthur who is a lot more simple and just loves the whole joy around christmas it's a lovely film if you haven't seen it before i have just ruined it um <laughs> but it is good um if you've got kids that haven't seen it then i would recommend it next which is a lovely Christmas classic and that's the holiday I nearly forgot what it was called then and it's right here and um, this is Cameron Diaz, Kate Winslet, Jack Black and Jude Law uh, basically they do like a house swap and then um so Kate Winslet swaps houses with Cameron Diaz and they both come out of like horrible relationships or horrible affairs and then they switch switcheroo and find people that they do like in the end so lovely, cosy, romantic comedy. I really like it. So that's also a good one. Uh, this is my husband's favourite, which is Miracle on 34th Street. It's not actually my favourite film, but I do enjoy it. Uh, this has um, the girl that played Matilda and one of the Attenborough brothers, Richard Attenborough, who was also in Jurassic Park. Um, and he plays Santa and nobody believes him. So they go to court and it's a big trial. Um which sounds a little bit like not very Christmassy, but it is really, really sweet and very good film. I love it. This is an English classic. I don't know if people in the US, you must be aware of these, but the Raymond Briggs um, short films, uh, The Snowman and Father Christmas. Father Christmas is my favourite only because there is some speaking in it, whereas um, The Snowman is a completely silent film. I know they do The Snowman and The Snow Dog as well, which I don't, particularly uh, it's lovely but it's uh, these two have to be played at christmas time every year for us especially in the uk it's a massive tradition for most people to put this on um so this is a two pack and i got both of these for a pound which is amazing um so we're gonna be having a great time watching that uh, another film is the nativity i'm sure there's not many more christmas ones to go so i'm going to try and whiz through them quickly for you uh yeah nativity this one has um i forget everybody's names martin freeman in i know there's like quite a few of these films now i just like the first one um it's quite funny it's about a school that aren't very good at usually doing the nativity play um that then become good doing the nativity play and there's like a whole backstory of america and his kind of love life and everything but it's it is a good film this is i suppose maybe a christmas film it's a winter film uh, my husband picked this one up and um he thought it would be good to add to the collection it's march of the penguins I feel like I've either not seen this ever before or I have seen this, but it was a really long time ago. I have watched um, the Flamingo uh, documentary that I feel like was Disney. Um, I forgot what that's called, but that's a really good film. I loved that one. So yeah, March of the Penguins is good to have. 
and Christmas and Christmas without Home Alone. Uh, it's one of my favourites, Home Alone. This is number one. I prefer number two, but I do like number one. It is really, really good. Obviously, hilarious and painful to watch, but the kids love it. They absolutely gag over some of the things that happen throughout the house. Um, and then these two films, so now we're going into kids' movies. I haven't got too many to go through. These two are ones that my husband picked out. They are his favourite films. They are Cool Runnings and The Mighty Ducks. Um, but I think he said that this wasn't actually, oh, it's the Mighty Ducks. Yeah. Um, so he bought these two for himself. I, I'm not a big fan of sports films. I don't watch sports. I don't like sports. Um, I know Cool Running is meant to be a classic. I know John Candy's in it. Is it John Candy? It is John Candy. Um, and I love John Candy in other films. I definitely prefer him in other films. Um, but yeah, these are his. Oh, they're not mine. I don't like sports films. Sorry, I can't get behind it. Uh, and then, as you know, I am slowly collecting my Harry Potter collection. So I found another one with a slipcase, which is a nice one. This is Deathly Hallows Part 1. So I now have two. I can't remember the other one I have now, but I have like some random numbers at the moment. But it's good to have... And then we're also starting to finish our collection of Toy Story. This is Toy Story 4. The kids love this one. Me, not so much. I feel like Toy Story should have been left at number three. I didn't feel like they needed to go any further with the story. I feel like the way they ended Woody's storyline in this film was very odd. I feel like Buzz was very much a very side character to this uh, story. And I like that it was about Woody, but at the same time, I just felt like it was such a rounded story in number three and it ended so perfectly like i don't know why this had to happen but it did and apparently there's number five as well which is going to be really interesting to see where they go with that um these are brilliant so this is the wallace and gromit collection this is the, the very first three that they ever did so it's a grand day out the wrong trousers and a close shave i used to love a close shave i kind of like a grand day out only because you can really see like the very beginnings of the animation style from ardman uh, and this has postcards in it which is really cool so um, I don't think we'll be doing anything with them, but I'll probably keep them in the disc. So there's like postcards of um, Wallace and Gromit. You probably can't see them because my camera's on a certain mode. Oh, that's quite sweet. It's like a little drawing of the the rocket. I didn't see that one. I've not opened these up properly. So they were included, which I thought was really cool. Um, I don't have any uh, movies that I have collected so far that have anything like that, like artwork in them. Um, I know newer releases and um, collectible releases are doing them, but it was quite cool to find this one. I didn't mention that all of these are secondhand. I know a lot of you have some thoughts as to whether you should collect secondhand or buy new and support, you know, film in general. And I totally get it. I do really want to make a video deep diving into kind of the two sides of that. Um, but I have had a lot of people push back on me buying uh, secondhand DVDs. And for the moment, it works for us. So um please be respectful in the comments but yes these are all secondhand dvds that's just the way i like to collect at the moment um and then the last children's dvd or kind of kiddish dvd is disney's cruella i didn't mind this this wasn't like the worst live action they've ever done i feel like out of all the live action they did this was probably the best and to be honest is the only one i've ever seen um and also the story was much more interesting it wasn't like a carbon copy of 101 dalmatians it was cruella's kind of backstory um i feel like she could have been a bit more evil in this i mean she was pretty evil in the original um but i know disney are doing this whole like morally gray um villains now you don't really get like a bad and a good you get like a bad a good and a you know you could see why they went so bad um but it's not bad i like the fashion and the story is pretty interesting and emma stone is very good and is it another emma Emma, oh my God, I know her name, but I always forget. Emma Thompson, they're both really good in it. So moving on to more of the adult films uh, and the next set of films I have started collecting is Hunger Games. Sorry, you can't really see, it's all blurry. Uh, so I got this one again with a slip cover, which is really nice. That's just the original Hunger Games. Uh, and then I also got Catching Fire. This is a really nice version. It's a little bit more like foily. 
uh, and again, slipcover, really cool, uh, collector's edition. And then I also have Mockingjay Part 1. I love the Hunger Games series. I really do. I There's something about them um, that just makes me want to watch all four all at once. Um, I just need to get uh, Mockingjay Part 2 and then this whole collection will be finished. But like Divergent, I really... It's like a comfort watch. Um, I really enjoy these films. If you haven't seen them, I mean, Jesus, where have you been? Um, but they're just really good. They're kind of like a dystopian sci-fi world where kids have to go into like a competition and kill each other. And then one comes out on top. So it's a little bit, it's very grim. It's very dark. Uh, I know that some people say it was based off of Battle Royale, which I really want to see. That's on my watch list. I haven't watched that yet, um, but I really enjoy them. And I feel like all the actors are really good in it and it's a great story. Um, yeah, it's just a good, it's just a good thing. And then kind of coming into more of some period pieces, I've got The Favourite. I believe this is also Yorgos Lanthimos. Yes, I'm slowly building up a Yorgos Lanthimos um collection i have this and the lobster but i have also seen uh killing of a sacred deer i really want to see poor things and i really would like to see uh the other one and i can't remember what that is but it's an older one um which seems really interesting i want to basically watch all of his works because i find him a fascinating director um this has emma stone rachel wise and olivia coleman um i've not seen it before i really want to i'm sorry it's blurry it's just because my camera is not focusing properly um, but yeah, this is supposed to be really good and it'd be a really good watch. And another period film I have is Emma. This has Anya Taylor-Joy in it as well as Mia Goth. Um, I really like Mia Goth as an actress and I want to see a lot of her work as well. I've seen uh, High Life, the space one. That was really weird. And I've watched X, Pearl. I've seen bits of Pearl. And I've watched Maxine. I've also seen her in Nymphomaniac Part 2. So this is like another side of her that's a little bit more upbeat. Usually she does quite miserable films. Uh, and Anya Taylor-Joy is also really good. I've seen a lot of her work as well. And um, I've never read Emma. I've never watched Emma. So it'd be really interesting. I know, did Emma Thompson do Emma? Or did she do Sense and Sensibility? She was in a film as well. Um, it's a Jane Austen film. It says on the top. I was just about to say, I don't know whether it's Austen or Bronte. Bronte. But um, yeah, that hopefully will be a good watch. I've not seen that one before. This one was a great find. I got a triple feature. I don't mind because of space reasons. Oh my God, please focus. I don't mind because of space reasons in my house to have discs all in one. Um, this is a triple feature of Knocked Up, The 40 Year Old Virgin and Superbad. I've seen every single one of these and these are some of my favorite comedies. Very um, quotable, very funny. Um, if I was to say which one was my fave, I do like the four year old virgin. I really do. Um, but super bad is also equally on top of my list of hilarious films. I just, I just like them. Um, before comedy got, um, a little bit more censored, those were very, very funny. Um, and then kind of moving on to more just general genres. Um, I got You've Got Mail. I have watched this as well this month. Very classic, very great and uh, nostalgic. My mum and dad actually probably had a version of this snappy DVD case of You've Got Mail. It was one of the first kind of DVDs they purchased when they first got a DVD player. Um, and it just opens up like that. It's very sweet, a lovely story, all about a bookshop and a romance, kind of enemies to lovers. Um, so if you're into that kind of thing, uh, if you're a book girly in general, then you may like that. Um, I got another, um, oh my God, Wes Anderson film. Nearly forgot that. Uh, this is Moonrise Kingdom. I have not seen any Wes Anderson live action films. He does do animation. I have seen both Isle of Dogs and I also have seen Fantastic Mr. Fox. I love both. I love the animation style. I love stop motion. But I have not seen any of his live action films. I have Moonrise Kingdom and The Grand Budapest Hotel, which are on my watch list. I will get around to them eventually. Uh, but this has a stacked cast. I think most of his films do. Uh, there's Bruce Willis, Edward Norton, Bill Murray, Francis McDormand, Tilda Swinton, uh, Jason Schwartzman, and Bob Balaban. So yeah, that's that one. Uh, I also got Aaron Brockovich. This is another one of Hubby's favourites. Uh, I actually really enjoy this, if it were photograph. Uh, it's a really good film. It's uh, about a law case, uh, about like dirty water, 
uh, Anne Erin herself is somebody that kind of works her way up in the law world with no um no formal training she just kind of you know she's she's smart but she's not like educated and there's a lot of prejudice around her and what she wears and how she lives um because she is in quite dire poverty and she is like a really amazing kind of story like rags to riches kind of i mean it's more like you know she works her way up in this law case and wins for people and it's really 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 sweet a few spacey films i got passengers this is jennifer lawrence and chris pratt uh basically they go on a mission to colonate another planet and chris pratt's like thing pod like thing where they get frozen or whatever uh stops working or malfunction so he wakes up like really early like 90 years early uh and then he sees jennifer lawrence in her pod and thinks she's really pretty and wakes her up as well and it goes from there i've also got arrival this is one of the films i've only seen a little bit of this is amy adams and jeremy renner uh, it's about aliens that come down and uh, Amy Adams is like a linguist or a, a language person. She can like decipher languages. Um, so she goes, she gets called to go there to work out what they're saying because they talk in like this inky circles. That's as far as I got. Never got any further. I love Denise Villeneuve. June and June part two are my favourite sci-fi films of the decade. Um, so I kind of I'm wanting to deep dive more into his other works. I have watched Enemy. Wasn't sure about that one. Wasn't sure. But I do like his other films. So I haven't seen that fully, but I will do, hopefully. Another classic. I've got a couple of classics. I've got a couple of classics. Speed, Keanu Reeves. Love Keanu Reeves. Matrix is my favourite film of all time. Um, it's top three, at least, uh, if not number one. Um, I've never seen Speed, lots of people say they like it, um, it also has Sandra Bullock in it, I've never seen it, but um, I can get behind some fast cars and action, I just like Keanu Reeves, this is why I got it. Uh, another classic is The Abyss, I don't remember ever seeing this, is this a James Cameron film? I believe it is, I don't actually know what this is about, but it is a classic and most people have probably watched it, I just haven't. I just haven't this and um armageddon i get confused between but one's the sea and one is space so i don't know why it's that so hard to remember i've never seen this one don't know if it's scary or i don't know we'll give it a go this one's actually unopened as well which is cool uh, and then a few more horror type films i've got kevin bacon in stir of echoes stir of echoes uh, i'm pretty sure i've watched a vlogger I don't know if it's Cody Leach or somebody else really really recommend this quite a few times and I saw it and I was like oh my god I think that's the film that that guy recommends um so I picked it up never seen it before don't know what it's about um but it will be interesting to see uh, and then I also got a couple of films within the same series I suppose uh, I have seen both of these I have Hannibal and I also have no I have the Red Dragon and I also have Hannibal um Red Dragon, I really like. This one is the one with Ray Fiennes in it. And the Hannibal one is, I think, the more gory one. This is the one where you actually see, like, brains. Is this the one with, like, Claudel? Claudel? Is he in this? Claudel? Maybe he's not. Oh, my God, Hans Zimmer does the music. I wouldn't be surprised, actually, to be honest. Is he in that one? He's definitely not Red Dragon and he's definitely not Silence of the Lambs. I do think this is the one with the guy that plays, I always forget his name. Uh, he's in Batman and he's also in um, Harry Potter. He plays Sirius Black. You know the name. That's the person that's in this. He plays the guy in the wheelchair that's terrifying. Um, and it is one of the more gorier versions of Hannibal. Uh, but Red Dragon's really good, and I love The Silence of the Lambs, and that's my favourite, I think. But I don't have that one yet. 
Um, I also got uh, The Lost Boys. Uh, lots of people recommend this for a really good vampire flick. Never seen it. I also really want to get uh, From Dusk Till Dawn with George Clooney in it, which is a Tarantino film. Never seen that either. Um, but I'm kind of on a little high with vampire films. So I really wanted to see what all the hype was about because a lot of people say this is in their favourites um, for lots of reasons. I am much more of a Twilight vampire lover. <laughs> but I can get behind some like more gory and more kind of realistic vampire films, which I'm not, you know, afraid to deep dive to. And then the last thing I got, which I am starting to think about is TV series. I want to make a video about TV series I want to start collecting, but one of the main ones and one of the main reasons why I wanted to do that video is because I found these guys. These are the Game of Thrones um, series. They are both sealed and they were only £1.50. How amazing is that? Um, so I have random seasons. I have season four uh, and I have season six, which is the one with all the faces in, in the thing. Now, okay, Game of Thrones ended badly. I'm not going to lie. All right? I understand season eight was not was not the way any of it should have been. There was no satisfaction in any of it. And certain characters that should have done stuff over other characters didn't happen. Certain endings that happened that made you just want to like, sorry, what? <laughs> um, it was a bit of a mess. I feel like there were certain choices that were made that weren't great, but then, you know, there's no real ending to the books anyway. So they had to kind of make it up as they went along and they just didn't do that good of a job. I do, however, enjoy most seasons of Game of Thrones until it gets to that ending part so I do still want to collect them um and I, I love Game of Thrones I also don't have any I don't have a Sky membership anymore I used to have it a long time ago but you can't actually stream Game of Thrones on anything um you have to pay for it so I mean like, correct me if I'm wrong but I only have Netflix and Amazon as far as I know they don't stream Game of Thrones for free so I'm always trying to like find ways to watch it and I don't usually get to do that so I'm really really excited that I picked these guys up so I'm hoping to get the other five uh six there's eight seasons six two minus six um yeah that's what I'm hoping to do um but yeah I'm really really happy I found those because they are brand new and never been opened so that's a very good find and that my lovelies is everything I collected over the month of October I really do think I'll be slowing down a lot I mean I said that last time I did say that last time that didn't happen last time I am going to try and slow down for Christmas period just because um, I have to get gifts for other people also it's been a little bit dry in the um DVD hunting world I haven't found a lot out there um, so I will probably have a lot less in the next month, but I will still be doing a haul video if I do find anything. Uh, I also want to do a Christmas video about what I'm asking for uh, in terms of new physical media, um, which will be really fun uh, to do because there's a lot on the list. But yeah, that's the haul and I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you. Bye.